Well, let's go with our trig. You've just learned this. Maybe you've seen it before. Soka Toa, your mnemonic device. The Toa stands for the relationship for tangent. T-O-A. Tangent, that is the tangent of this angle, in this case 41 degrees, is the ratio of the opposite side, the green, over the adjacent side. Opposite, because this side is opposite the given angle, and this leg is adjacent to or next to. Now, I know this side's adjacent, but that one's reserved for hypotenuse. We'll get to that one in the next lesson. So, tangent, opposite over adjacent leg. So now, substitute away. In this example, tangent of 41 is 12 over our unknown. At this point, it's algebra time. You have to know that you can switch these two around and change or rearrange that equation into this. If you're not comfortable with that, think of it as multiplying both sides by x, then dividing both sides by the tangent of 41 degrees. That's what you're doing, after all. Now, instead of using our calculators, we're going old school. So you know how to do it. Trig tables. Don't worry, you'll use calculators on the next one. Um, you've got a trig table in your textbook, page 925. It looks like this. All you do is scroll down until you get 41 degrees. And I can read in the third column, that's the tangent ratio, 0.8693. I've got a four-place decimal. So, come back to here, and I'm just going to replace that. So I've got 12 divided by this decimal, which is less than 1. Think about it. Is, does, that make, does that make the blue bigger or less or smaller than the green? You should be thinking in your head, 12 divided by a number less than 1 means it's going to be a little bit more than 12. And that's going to come out to be about 13.8. Well, let's do another one. Opposite side here, the 22. The adjacent is my unknown, just like the last one. There's my TOA ratio. I set it up, and I rearrange. I told you we could swap these two. You got that down. Now we're going to go to a calculator. So instead of using those tables, where's that calculator? Ah, there it is. You need a scientific calculator. It means you've got to spend more than $5. So here we go. 22 divided by, and we're going to put in there, let me see, 58. There's my 58. That's the tangent. Now, that 1.6 is the tangent of 58. Notice I get more than four decimal places, more than the trig table. But we're going to round to the nearest tenth anyway. I do this, 13. I got all those characters. doesn't matter. 13.7 to the nearest tenth, and I'm done. So there you go, right there. Well, here we go with a 45-45-90 triangle. And I'm going to use the ratio from section 7.4, extended ratio 1 to 1 to radical 2. You know, honestly, I'm, I'm given two sides here. I only needed one. I've got 6 radical 2. I've got 6 here. So obviously, the missing side is 6. But let's suppose we didn't know that. Let's try using trig. Using my ratio, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so the tangent of 45 equals x over 6. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 6, x is 6 tangent 45, and I pull up my handy-dandy calculator, and here we go. Well, if I'm going to say 6 times 45, where's the tangent? Tangent is 1. Well, 6 times 1 is 1, even though the calculator has a rounding mistake there. So, there you go. No matter how you do it, it's 6. But honestly, isn't it easier just to say isosceles right triangle? 6 and 6. Or the extended ratio, 1, 1, radical 2. That's the way I would do it. Well, here we go with a pretty straightforward exercise. We're going to find the value of x. And if I use my 30, 60, 90 identity, where the ratios of the sides, remember, are easy as 1, 2, radical 3. Well, if I use the ratio this way, I can say, hmm, radical 3 is to 1, as 10 radical 3 is to 10. 
So I'm done. This site is 10. That's easy. Well, let's compare that to using trig. Here we go. So, I could say with my Sokotoa, obviously this side is the adjacent here. This is the opposite. Opposite over adjacent. Let's set that up. So, the tangent of 30 equals x over 10 radical 3. Multiply both sides of the equation by 10 radical 3. There you go. What does that mean? Hmm. It means you pause your calculator and you do this. Uh, 10 times. Well, here's 3. That's radical 3. Watch this. I'll hit the equals here. 17.3. That's pretty good. That's 10 radical 3. Now I'm going to multiply that times the tangent of 30. 30. That's the tangent of 30. That's the multiplication. Look at that. A bit of a rounding error there. But if I you know, the computer generated rounding error, that is. I round that uh, to the nearest tenth, and what do you know? Same thing. But what's easier? Clearly, in this example, that's the way to go. Now we're going to take our two special right triangles, 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90, and using the ratios of their sides, we're going to calculate, let's say, well, the tangent of these two angles. First, 45. Well, again, opposite over adjacent, 1 over 1. That's pretty easy. 1 and done. Now, how about 30? Opposite over adjacent, 1 over radical 3. Now, I know you were taught to rationalize the denominator, but you really don't have to. You're going to get a calculator answer. How about if you just do this? Grab that calculator, and I would take 3. That's radical 3. You probably have memorized that from the previous chapter. You should know it's about 1.73. And watch this. 1 over x. Well, that's 1 over radical 3. And there you go. 0.5774 there, about. So that's to the nearest four decimal places, just like the trig tables. And just to back this up, let's just go back here and just confirm. See, there's 45, and the tangent is, of course, 1. And here's 30, and the tangent is, of course, as we calculated. Well, let's get right into this one. We know Sokotoa. We know tangent is opposite. Tangent of 25 is opposite over adjacent. Yeah, we've got that. And we know how to rearrange it. We've done it in the other problems. And for old time's sake, let's do the calculation here. Uh, again, 8 divided by tangent of 25. There's 25. There's the tangent of 25. There's my division uh, to the nearest tenth. That's 17.2. Pretty close on the line there, but I'm going with 17.2. So um, normally we'd say we're done, but look at the next sentence. Check your solution using the tangent of the other acute angle. That's this one right here. Well, the other acute angle, we know, is 65. The triangle sum theorem, of course, tells us that you know, these two acute angles have to add up to 90. And then I'm going to set up again. Now I'm going to say the tangent of 65. Now the opposite is x and the adjacent is 8. A little bit different here. Multiply both sides of the equation by 8. Oops, disappeared right there. And now it's Potter calculator. And still got that old answer in there. We'll clear that out. Let's say 8 times 65. There's my tangent of 65. Equals. Heavens to Mergentroids, they say. That is a dead ringer. Of course, it's exactly the same thing. 17.156, etc., which we rounded just like last time to 17 and 2 tenths. Well, let's get right into it here. Tangent of 40, opposite over adjacent. And there's our rearranging. Pull out the calculator, give it a try here. So I've got 13 divided by, there's 40, 
That's the tangent of 40. Hmm, dividing by a number less than 1. So my answer is going to be bigger than 13. And there you go, 15 and a half. That's a little mental check. Let me move this out of the way for a little bit. And I'm going to see 15 and a half. Now that makes sense because the blue should be bigger than the green. How do I know that? Well, this is how. Remember, we're going to take find this angle so that we can check our solution using the other acute angle. But remember, the alligator opens his mouth. I taught you something like that. This is the bigger of the two acute angles, so it opens to the bigger side. Oh, yeah. So make sure that x comes out bigger than 13. A quick little mental check for you. So let's do this. Let's, well, let's set it up this way. Tangent of 50 is now x over 13. And then we'll rearrange, multiply both sides of the equation by 13, and use the old symmetric property there. Put x on the left. And now let's pull out the, where's that calculator? Let's see if we get this answer again. I'm going to say 13 times, and I'll say 50. And where's my tangent? By tangent right there, and that's equal. Ta-da, exactly the same. Of course it's the same, but it's a good way to check your work. And let's close out with one more example. Looks pretty familiar, but I've got my tangent of 65. Again, opposite over adjacent. Hey, you got that down. And again, we know we multiply both sides of the equation by 9. This time, I'm, I'm also just going to flip it around there using the symmetric property. Then we pull out the old calculator, and we're going to say, hmm, 9 times the tangent of 65 with our calculator. So that's 65 tangent. So the tangent of 65 is, you can see that, 2.14. I hit the equals. There's the multiplication. About 19 and 3 tenths. Looks good. So, um... You think we're done, but just like the last one, we need to check our solution using the other angle. Well, the other angle would be 25. Again, corollary to triangle sum. It's a little funny because the last time they gave us a 25 degree angle, but yeah, no imagination here. So now let's just write it this way. The tangent of 25, again, now the opposite is 9 and the adjacent is x. And we're going to flip these two, or sorry, swap these two. I'll call them the extremes. And now we've got x equals 9 over the tangent of 25. I should say degrees, but um, getting lazy there. Let me do this again. 9 divided by, here's the tangent of 25, 25 tangent equals. And there you go, the exact same solution.